Hi, I'm Sarah Morehouse. Your first gluten-free shopping trip is likely to be an eye-opening experience. I wanted to give you an idea of the kinds of things you need to look out for in terms of hidden gluten ingredients and gluten cross-contamination. So I went to the Niski Yuna Co-op mainly because I thought they would be less likely to chase me out of the store for taking pictures of their shelves. Now obviously unless you're in the gluten-free product aisle you can just roll on by any of the bread and baked goods. Sadly you also need to keep walking past the samples table. It used to be the highlight of my shopping trip but now it's verboten. Samples may or may not have gluten in them but there's usually pretzels or crackers or bread for dipping somewhere around there and you can't be sure that crumbs didn't get in. I used to buy everything in bulk, rice, nuts, trail mix, dried fruit, baking soda, everything. Not anymore. Flour is sold in bulk too and it dusts up. The flour dust settles down on everything in the area, so the bulk food is probably all contaminated. Even if that didn't happen, people take the scoop or the tongs out of one container and use it in another container. They're not supposed to, but they do. Meat. Meat should be safe, right? Well, yes and no. I've seen arguments online where people who are sort of gluten-free fanatics insist that you can't eat meat if the animal ate wheat while it was ar alive. This is just not true. Any gluten that the animal consumed would have been broken down into tiny, harmless amino acids before being incorporated into its tissues. On the other hand, there are several ways for gluten contamination to be introduced into the meat before you buy it. Ham is often contaminated with gluten because of the brining and curing process. There are some brands that are safe though. One of the gluten-free brands of ham is Jones Ham. Deli meat often has gluten in it because of wheat-based fillers. Unfortunately, anything that's cut on the same slicer will have gluten in it too, because it's impossible for the deli to clean their slicer to eliminate cross-contamination in between every kind of lunch meat they slice. Boar's Head products are all gluten-free, but if you want to buy them sliced, you need to ask the deli manager if they have a dedicated gluten-free slicer. Sausages may have gluten in them because of fillers used in them. If several kinds of sausage are made, some with gluten ingredients, some without, you'll need to ask the meat manager whether the gluten-free sausages are made on gluten dedicated gluten-free equipment. The same kind of thing applies to ground beef and turkey. It goes without saying that you shouldn't buy meats that have been marinated, stuffed, or breaded. But aside from that, meat is gluten-free. Milk and eggs will be gluten-free even if the cow or chicken consumed gluten. However, there are some dairy products that may have gluten. For instance, cheese is almost always gluten-free, but blue cheese and Roquefort are not, because the cultures that are used to make them are grown on a wheat substrate. Grated and shredded cheeses may have modified food starch in them to keep them from sticking and clumping, so check the label. Processed cheese may have modified food starch, maltodextrin, or malt flavoring in them. In particular, easy cheese is not safe. Cheese slices and wedges may get gluten cross-contamination if they're cut on the same slicer as something that had gluten, so ask the deli manager. Most yogurt is safe, but for some reason, Dannon is not. Also watch out for yogurt that has granola to mix in. Even if you don't open the granola packet, the factory probably did not keep the two ingredients strictly separate. Other than that, dairy products will be gluten-free. Produce is safe. Fruits and vegetables are all naturally gluten-free, and so are the food-grade waxes used to preserve some of them. And even if a little flour landed on your apple somehow, you should be washing it thoroughly before you eat it anyway. Now on to the aisles of products in boxes, bags, jars, and cans. You'll need to read all the ingredients on every one of them, so don't go to the store when it's busy. The first time, go when the department managers will be around. Try weekday morning if you can. After you've shopped a few times, you'll start to have an idea of what products are okay for you, and then you can shop whenever's convenient for you. You should be keeping a shopping list of some sort. I keep mine in a shopping list app on my smartphone, but a little notebook would work too. Just keep track of the products that are safe for you, their prices, what stores you found them at, and whether you like them enough to buy them again. Double check the products on your list every once in a while. While dedicated gluten-free brands won't suddenly add gluten, a product that was just incidentally gluten-free but was intended for the mass market may decide to change the formula and add malt flavoring or change from a corn-based maltodextrin to a wheat-based one, and then you'll have a nasty surprise. At the Misty Una Co-op, I took some pictures of products that you wouldn't necessarily think have gluten in them, but they do. For instance, here's a can of tomato-based soup. 
It doesn't have noodles in it, but it's got both wheat flour and modified food starch. Modified food starch isn't necessarily made from wheat, but it can be, and Progresso probably doesn't even know whether their modified food starch is gluten-free or not. Worse yet, it could be gluten-free for one lot and full of gluten the next lot. Here's another one, chicken broth concentrate for cooking. It has maltodextrin, which is another ingredient that could be made from either wheat or corn, and you'll never know which. Here's some bullion with maltodextrin. Why are they putting this stuff in there? probably to give the bullion a richer feel in the mouth. There are gluten-free versions of these products, and sometimes they're not even special diet products, but you need to read the, the labels to be able to tell. Corn flake breadcrumbs. These look like a nice, safe alternative to wheat breadcrumbs, but no. The third ingredient is malt flavoring. What's being malted here is barley. Barley is one of the gluten grains. Same thing for Rice Krispies. It's a rice cereal, so why on earth would they put wheat in there? Malt flavoring is the third ingredient. If you want gluten-free Rice Krispies, you have to find the kind in the yellow box. It's okay, they taste better anyway. I order mine from Amazon.com. Okay, let's look at some condiments. Here's a barbecue sauce. Modified food starch, which is probably being used as a thickener in this case. Lucky for me, my favorite dinosaur barbecue sauces are all gluten-free. Ranch dressing? Seriously? This is going to make a lot of people very depressed but it's thickened with modified food starch. If you really miss it, go to Penzi's Spices and buy one of their salad dressing mixes. The spice packet has instructions to make your own ranch dressing. You can bring a little bottle of it to the restaurant in your purse, or a hip flask, be creative. No surprise, gravy mix has wheat flour as its second ingredient and pure wheat gluten further down the list. What is kind of a surprise is how little actual beef goes into it, scary. Bad news for people who like Asian food, most soy sauce is mostly wheat. They do make gluten-free soy sauce, and there's also wheat-free tamari, which is like soy sauce, but a bit more earthy. And for special snowflakes like me, who can't have wheat or soy, there's coconut aminos. I shamelessly take my bottle of coconut aminos to Mis Mr. Fuji's every time I have sushi, and they're very nice about it. But you can't count on the restaurant to make you a dish using wheat-free soy sauce. So most of the time, if you want Asian food, you have to make it at home. How heartless are these people putting gluten in tea? Tea, the thing we drink when we have a tummy ache, and now some of it gives us a tummy ache? This particular herbal tea is made, made, made mainly of roasted barley. Korean and Japanese green tea sometimes has barley in it, too. Most teas do not have barley or gluten in them, but you should keep an eye out for flavored teas that taste like baked goods. They may use barley malt in the flavoring. Speaking of which, the FDA does not require food manufacturers to disclose what actual flavorings they're using, as long as they say natural flavorings or artificial flavorings. Either of those could contain barley malt, which has gluten. Generally, if it's a product that's aiming for a caramel or bakery kind of flavor, beware that it might contain bar barley malt. This is particularly common in flavored coffees. The only kind of coffee I'm aware of that is always gluten-free, even for flavored coffees, is Green Mountain Coffee Roasters, which also includes Newman's own brand. Dunkin' Donuts is particularly bad, but for another reason. Dunkin' Donuts buys its coffee beans from farmers who use the same trucks to transport grains, so the beans are contaminated from the point of harvest. To all of you who live on donkeys, I am truly sorry. Try Stewart's or Cumbies and stick with unflavored coffee. This, to me, is the most frustrating thing of all. Okay, delicious chocolate bar, do you or do you not contain gluten? I just don't know. The company manufactures gluten-containing foods on its equipment, and of course the equipment is cleaned in between, but they don't go to any effort of doing it well enough to make the product actually gluten-free. Or maybe they did, but they don't want to spend any money having the batches tested to make sure. So for all we know, this could be safe. Or not. Do you want to test it on your own stomach, though? Oats. For years, they thought oats must contain gluten, or that the oat protein, avenin, was so close to gluten that it made people react. But it actually turned out that oats are usually grown in rotation with wheat, so that the fields are usually still have a few sprigs of wheat growing in there, and that wheat gets into the harvested oats. So, if you want to eat oats, then you need to buy special gluten-free oats, which are about twice as expensive. Mmm, Ridex Breakfast of Champions for your septic tank. No, really, right on the back of the box it warns you that the product dusts up. 
and then down at the bottom it tells you that the active ingredient is in a wheat bran carrier. So there you are trying to flush a box of Riddix to make your septic system happy and you inhale a snoot full of wheat dust which goes down your throat and gets swallowed. If you have to use Riddix, wear a face mask or make your spouse do it. Toiletries and cosmetics, please do not eat them. But even if you only use them on your skin the way you're supposed to, you're going to ingest a little of them. Shampoo rinses off down your face in the shower. You put on lip balm and then you lick your lips. You put on face cream or sunblock and then sweat and it comes down your face. And a lot of products use wheat germ oil because it's good for your skin and your hair and it contains vitamin E. The good news is that more and more companies are ditching or at least clearly labeling their gluten ingredients. There are now many options for gluten-free toiletries and cosmetics. And finally, here is a box of wheat gluten. You should probably stay away from it. So thank you for joining me for Sneaky Gluten in the Grocery Store. I haven't even begun to cover all the places where gluten hides out in seemingly harmless food products. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what to look for. And just keep in mind that for every product I showed you, there's a gluten-free alternative out there. Except the box of wheat gluten. <laughs>